Now that we've loaded our map, we're going to explore looking at annotations side by side with our contact map. In your tutorial, click Loading Annotations. We're going to load some 1D annotations, in this case, ChIP-seq tracks from ENCODE. In the top panel, as you see, we have Load Map, Load B Map, Load Tracks, Session, and Share. Now we're going to click Load Tracks, and we see ENCODE. This takes a while to populate because there are tens of thousands of tracks from ENCODE, but once it's populated one time, after that it will be cached and it will come up very quickly. All of the ENCODE tracks that are available for this genome up here, which is quite a bit, we are going to filter them in order to find the tracks we want to load. So we, in the search bar, we type GM12878. That's the cell type we are interested in. We want to load CTCF. Now there are still 50 different kinds of ChIP-seq tracks we can load. So we're just going to decide to load Bernstein lab tracks. So we type Bernstein. And we see we have ChIP-seq peak, signal, and signal p-value tracks. If we go to the second tab, we see some more. Conservative IDR thresholded peaks. Peaks in background, IDR. So back to the first, we're going to choose the combined signal p-value track. We click that track and we click OK. Now we click load tracks, encode again. This time, instead of CTCF, we're going to do a different histone mark, H3, K36, ME3. Once again, we're going to use the signal p-value track and click OK. As you can see, these tracks have loaded on top of our image, and we can see where there are peaks in the signal track and how they correspond to features we might see in the 2D contact map. We can edit their appearance by looking at this gear icon. So for example, we can set the track color. I'm going to make it green. We can also set the track name. We probably don't need the GM12878 since we already know that. So let's just make it CTCF. Let's make the bottom one also just the H3K36ME3. And then let's change the color again. I'm going to change it to orange in this case. Now we can load 2D annotations. Again, click Load Tracks and ENCODE. As you can see, the menu comes up much more quickly. We are interested in two-dimensional annotations, but these are also stored in ENCODE as BEDPE tracks. So let's look for domains. GM12878. domains. And what we see is the topologically associated domains from exactly this replicate, the combined 
biological and typical replicates for GM12878. So click that and click OK. As you can see, these appear as yellow boxes along the diagonal. These were called by the algorithm arrowhead on this map. Let's also load the peaks. Go to load tracks, encode, GM12878, long range chromatin interactions. So this is the word that they use in encode to describe the peaks. Clicking on the combined replicate, this is with all of the bioreplicates and all of the technical replicates, we click OK. And these appear as the cyan dots. Now, you can also edit the appearance of these 2D annotations. The way to do that is again with the hamburger icon or the three horizontal lines. You click that and click the 2D annotations button. Now what you see are the labels. You can turn them on and off with the eye. You can change the color. You can move them up and down. You might want to move them up and down if, for example, you had putative loop calls, one on top of the other, and you wanted to make sure that you were seeing if they were both calling the same thing. You would also be able to see that by turning on and off. Now, let's look at these annotations alongside the 1D annotations. It seems like maybe there's peaks that are lining up with these peaks in the map, but we can't be totally sure with our eye, and one way to make it clearer is to press the shift button and move your mouse. And when you do that, you see these crosshairs. And so, for example, we can look here and see that there's a, looks like there's a strong CTCF peak on one axis and on the other there's a smaller one. Similarly here, if we go down here, again on the x-axis we do see a peak in both CTCF and in H3K36ME3 and it seems to be corresponding to this domain boundary where again there's also a peak on this axis for both these marks. The fact that the CTCF peaks line up with the CTCF peaks and the fact that the domain boundaries seem to line up with these histone marks. These were two key findings from our Cell 2014 paper. We actually made this discovery using Juicebox by exploring the data in just this way and noticing correlations and then experimentally uh, testing them by actually exhaustively looking uh, quantitatively at all the data. We kept analyzing and we were able to show that CTCF does appear to mediate loop formation and that the do domains are decorated by different epigenetic marks. And we showed this more conclusively in a follow-up paper from 2015. And if you scroll down, these are all the directions that I just talked you through. And at the very end, we have links to those two papers.